So, welcome back to another episode. And today, I can spend a little bit of time, reminisce, and talk about some of my favorite games on the Sega Master System. This is a machine that I grew up with, and I have a lot of affection for. Now, we have to go back in the way back machine here, to 1988. And what do I remember about 88? 88 was a year where everybody that I knew had a Nintendo. That was the only console they had. They may have had an Atari before it, but they had a Nintendo. Anything else was unusual or not heard about. That's where we enter into the Master System. A machine that I, you know, I asked my parents for, they obviously said no, <laughs> you know, um, because it's like, oh, you already have a video game machine, you don't need another one, and there's like, oh man, I was seeing all these amazing commercials for 3D games and all these other, you know, games, like role-playing games and things that, at the time, I thought, and I still think, look better than the Nintendo. It really, really did. Some of these games were, wow. And so I was really interested in it, but uh, the parents would never go for it, so I was like, ah. Uh. And I gotta tell you, the very first time I, I saw one in motion, for, you know, compared to watching it on, on a television commercial was, some of my friends down the street went away on a little vacation down to the States for about a week. And they took some other friends of ours in the na neighborhood down. And they came back, and I went over there when they came back. I went with my friend Andrew. And uh, I was talking to them at their front door, asking them how their trip was and stuff like that. And I was talking about this brand new game that I'd seen on TV called Fantasy Star. And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to play one day. I'm so excited. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, should we tell them? And these were two brothers, as I said. Should we tell them? And I'm like, tell me what? They're like, yeah, you, you better come downstairs. So we headed on downstairs into the basement. I've talked about this before. And there's all these nerdy guys in my neighborhood. You know, the Dungeons and Dragons players. I, I'll never forget them. And uh, they're all hovered around this Commodore monitor. And I have uh, a Commodore monitor, the same one that we played back in the day. And on this monitor, they had the Sega Master System. On the monitor, they had the Sega Master System. And they had a few games. And I got to share the games with you. The number one game that blew our minds that day, and I've talked about it so many times, was Fantasy Star 1. An RPG, one of the best, I'd say, 8-bit RPGs ever made. Besides Final Fantasy 1. Fantastic game. Blew my mind. I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I saw this. It looked like a cartoon. And that's something else I want to talk about with this machine, is the graphics. So pastel -y, so, at the time, pretty. Really really had an impact on me, that pastelli, you know, pastelli colors. Uh, the other game they brought back was Ease. Can you believe it? Ease, The Vanished Omens. And we all thought it was called Wise back then. We had no other way of figuring it out. Another role-playing game, action RPG, kind of like Zelda. The next game they brought, see, this is why I became so into RPGs. This is all they brought back. They brought back Miracle Warriors. Uh, you know, a Seal of the Dark Lord. I did an entire series review on that game as well. You notice the trend here? All these games that I played uh, that very summer in 1988 had such a huge impact on me. Miracle Wars, another RPG. Just an overhead uh, fantastic game. Unbelievable. And the other game that they had was King's Quest. A game that was on PC. And I was always jealous of people who had PCs. Uh, you know, because we didn't have one. And they had ported King's Quest to the Master System. And I, and I looked at this and I, I watched them play that as well and it was fantastic. Really kind of cool game. I was terrible at it. Couldn't get used to the controls, but I thought it was really good. So you have to understand that made such an impact on me and I couldn't believe how cool this machine was. And I thought, wow, and it, it was this really cool alternative to Nintendo. And that's the first time I really kind of, you know, saw Sega. I'd seen all their arcade games. I should say, all the arcade games, but I'd never seen, you know, a home console, and this was their first home console. They were really trying to push it out, and they were trying to push it out with a lot of different types of games, 3D games. And I did a review on the, a lot of the 3D games, and it came with a light gun, and just like the, the Nintendo light gun, but this one was more powerful. In fact, I even used this in the movie. And one cool little feature is, in Japan, this was called the Mark III. That was the name of this machine. 
And look at the cartridges they got. We got some, I did some, you know, I did an episode on terrible box arts as well, but look at the great, cool little gold boxes they got for the Mark III in Japan. I was always so jealous of this when I got older, and I was able to pick some of these up. This is Zillion 1 and 2. You know, the games are okay, but damn, the box, you know, the boxes are damn, so, so damn cool. Gold boxes. So, I didn't get a Master System for a long time, but my friend Andrew got one. And he rented a couple of games. One of them was just an excellent game. And that is Govelius, Valley of Doom. It is the Master System's answer to Zelda. It's a Zelda clone? Yes, it is. But it's, uh, it's a pretty cool one. And you have to like go around and just clear all the maps of all the enemies and secret holes open up and you can go in there and uh, you know talk to different characters, find money, uh, you know, upgrade your equipment. Uh, a typical uh, Zelda-style game, but it was neat to see the graphics. And honestly, this is not bashing Nintendo because I love Nintendo, but the Master System graphics were striking to me, and they had an impact on me that I was saying, "Wow, this looks better than this Nintendo." It was, it was a great alternative. I really loved it. Man, I was getting tortured as a kid because it, all of a sudden, different pockets of friends were started to get this machine. And I know I've talked about this guy Swagger, who I play Dungeons and Dragons with, the only guy I, I've ever known to beat Dungeons and Dragons, the game. We, we went uh, and rented a couple of games uh, at his place as well. Wonderboy in Monsterland. I would go over to his place, I'll never forget it, and, and eat noodles and play Wonder Boy in Monsterland and this game was such a, an excellent, excellent side view action game based on the very first Wonder Boy game that was uh, uh, just a strictly side view uh, action game where this had RPG elements. And I just remember spending like so much time skipping school and uh, playing that at his house and eating those damn noodles and I had such a great time, such great memories of that. Now the Master System had a lot of games uh, released for it. Some, some good, some not so good like any kind of console. And I picked out some of my favorites right here. Some I think are really, really good. Some of the best on the on the system, I would say. The first one is Dynamite Ducks. No, I'm kidding. Get the heck out of here. It's not Dynamite Ducks. Jesus. It's Fantasy Zone. Fantasy Zone is a, a really great uh, side view game with Opa Opa, uh, which was a semi mascot for Sega back in the day. Everybody kind of kind of forgets that. It was Alice Kidd and Opa Opa, but this was a great game, it was an arcade game, extremely popular in Japan, ported to nearly every single machine. A lot of fun, Every it's basically a side-scrolling action game, and you have to destroy uh, the little ships, the little kind of like boss ships. Once you destroy them, then you can you know go after the main boss uh, character. And I'm telling you, it's really tough. It's really tough, but I always love going into the shops and upgrading your equipment and... It's a really charming game, you know, so nostalgic, that music, that Fantasy Zone level music. <sighs> this one's a great one as well. Being a huge Alien fan, I got something quite similar, based on a, an arcade game, Alien Syndrome. I loved Alien Syndrome, and it takes place in a, a space station. And you're fighting aliens and rescuing hostages. It's a very simplistic type of game, but I just love the cover. It's a blatant ripoff of Alien, and I, I really like that. I just like being able to play, you know, on the kind of an Astromo-esque ship and you know fight aliens and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun back then. I, I quite enjoyed it. Man, I love this version of Double Dragon, and I have a lot of memories. I have a lot of memories of this game. Playing with my friend Andrew on his master system at his house. <sighs> and I was the biggest bastard in this game. All I would ever do is get, you know, like the bat or whatever, and I beat the hell out of my friend Andrew. I wouldn't even attack the enemies. I just beat the living crap out of him. And I was so good at it, and he hated it. He would just be so mad at me, and I... I whenever I think of Double Dragon, I always think about my friend Andrew and kicking the crap out of him in that game. I, I swear, I, I tried it like a like it was a fighting game. <laughs> okay, these are funny. These are funny. My friend Andrew said to me one day, Hey, can you re recommend some Master System games? Because I really want to buy some new games. And I'm a big anime fan. I was back then. And 
and I didn't know anything about these games, but I knew they were based off an anime, so I recommended them. Zillion 1 and Zillion 2. These are the gold boxes that I showed earlier. Zillion 1 and Zillion 2, I'll be honest here, they're not great games, but they're super nostalgic games for me. Andrew did not buy the first Zillion, he bought the second one, which is more of an, an action game. The, the first one is kind of a puzzle game where you can unlock doors and go back and forth. Kind of, dare I say, Metroidvania-ish, kind of. But the second one is a very, it's a very big action game and side view and it's really tough and it's really annoying and it's really frustrating. And he bought it and he spent, I think he spent $70 on it. He cursed my name for a thousand years after that. I've, and you know, whenever I see Zillion 2, I always think about how I let him down as a friend. I thought it was an anime type of game. I thought it'd be cool. I never played it. That's what you get for not having the internet back in those days. I played Mon Wonder Boy Monsterland, but another classic is Wonder Boy. The original Wonder Boy. Side view action game. We can jump on a skateboard. You know, fight a little monster, you know, you know monsters in a forest uh, on, on the hills and stuff like that. And whip your tomahawks at them. <sighs> it's kind of tough in the later levels, but it's a lot of fun. Everybody who had a Master System had this game. You had to have that game. Oh man, here we go. One of the best Wonder Boy games on the system. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap. It was the Dragon's Curse on the Turbo Graphics. That's another great version I recommend of this game. This is probably, yeah, this is definitely, I'll use the term again, a Metroidvania type of game where right at the beginning of the game, you get turned into a dragon and you're trying to change back into a human form. You're basically using your powers as these individual monsters to unlock other areas, to change back and forth between monsters that will unlock different areas. Every monster has a, has a certain power that will unlock a certain area. And you're going back and forth, back and forth, and it's tough, but it's really fulfilling. And one of my favorite games, honestly, on the Master System. This is at the height of the Master System. I think it's one of the best. Really, really good. You cannot play this machine without playing an Alex Kid game. As I said, the, one of the mascots for the system at the time it was Opa Opa and Alex Kid. What would I recommend here? Alex Kidd and Miracle World, High Tech World, Shinobi World, and The Lost Stars. I did an entire series review on this as well. Shinobi World is pretty good. Miracle World is kind of cute, I guess. High Tech World is an unusual game that it's not really an Alex Kidd game to begin with. I went into huge details about that. It's, it was based on another game. That's one that yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend. It's not so great. But man, so much history here and this is what this system really put Sega on the map for myself and for a lot of people there's a lot of other good games on here that you know I, I didn't I couldn't mention every single game obviously but you know there was great ports of Altered Beast that at the time was a good port honestly you look back now and go god that was bad but there's a lot of other really really great games like a lot of great you know RPGs that I never got a chance to play like Ultima you know, I never got a chance to play this. Ultima 4, I, I never got a chance to play this. I was able to pick all these Master System games here up for, I think it was $80 in a bin. I picked these up uh, a little while ago. I was happy to, to get a few more of them. And, you know, the Master System is something that I'm, I, I'm continually uh, discovering new games on and continuing to play, even to this day. It's, it's one of those machines that just is linked to my childhood. Whenever I hear, and I gotta say something for the sound chip, and I know this is the FM sound in Japan that sounds a lot better, but I grew up without that sound chip. Just listening to these uh, games the way they are over here without the sound chip. And I, I love, I, the fondness for the sound chip is unbelievable. The tings and beeps and it sounds so funny. You know, in the days now of orchestrated music, but back then, the, you know, the, the music had a very distinct sound to it. And I, and I just love it. And whenever I hear a Master System game, it just takes me back. I can tell. You know, I know that sound chip so well. Like, you know, it's it's like all the games are kind of related uh, through that sound chip. But they they all have a very similar type of uh, sound to them. And it's really, really quite nostalgic for me. But I recommend the Master System. It's cheap. You can get it for fairly cheap. You can get games 
for fairly cheap and you can check out some of the old classics and some of the great old classics are not too expensive you can still get games like fantasy star and miracle wars and ease and wonder boy uh, 3 you can find them honestly for under 30 dollars just have a look around you'd be surprised but love this machine so many memories linked to it and the 3d on it wasn't too bad when it worked it worked well you see, I've been talking about this machine for so many years and I just thought I'd come on and give it a, a little bit of a, an overview and look back in some of my memories playing it and what it was like back then. And I tell you, it's, it's sad that it didn't catch on as much as it deserved to because it really deserved to. But it wasn't from a lack of kids asking their parents for it because everybody had a Nintendo and they're like, hey, can I get a Sega Master System? And the parents are like, no. And you're like, oh, okay. And that was the end of that. So you just hang, you know, hung on to your Nintendo and waited for great games like Final Fantasy 1 and, and uh, the likes of that. So guys, I just wanted to come on today and talk about some of my love for this machine, some of my fondness for, uh, for it, and some of my memories playing it. So anyways, guys, until next time.